Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking at Matahari, born Margarefa Gertrude Ziele, a Dutch exotic dancer who was executed for espionage during the First World War. Hari was born on the 7th of August 1876 in Rwanda, the eldest of four children. Her mother, Antje van der Molen, died when Hari was 15 years old on the 9th of May 1891. Her father, Adam Zelle, owned a hat shop and became financially successful through making various investments in the oil industry and provided Hari with a lavish early childhood, including attendance at exclusive schools. By the age of 14, Hari was sexually active. However, her father's financial well-being did not last forever and in 1889 he went bankrupt with his first marriage falling apart. Zelle remarried on the 9th of February 1893 to Susanna Caprina Hoeve, with the family moving to Amsterdam, the largest city of the Netherlands. However, the family had a poor relationship and Hari was sent to live with her godfather, Visser in Sneek, in the southwest of Rwarden. A bewildered and lost 18-year-old Hari saw an advertisement in a Dutch newspaper by the Dutch colonial army captain Rudolf Macleod in early 1895. Aged 21 years her senior, Macleod was looking for a wife, living in Malang on the east side of Java in what was then the Dutch East Indies and is now part of Indonesia. He was the son of Captain John Bryanon Macleod and Dinah Luisa Daroness Sviets de Landas. The pair met in Amsterdam on the 5th of July 1895 and six days later, on the 11th of July 1895, the pair wedded in Amsterdam. This enabled Harry to move into the Dutch upper class at a time in society where class was of significant importance. MacLeod remained in the Netherlands and the pair had a child, Norman John MacLeod, born on the 30th of January 1897, who is pictured to the right with his father. During her marriage, Hari was frequently abused by her alcoholic husband who openly kept a Najagi, a concubine in the Dutch East Indies. Additionally, MacLeod was ridden with debts and had the then incurable disease syphilis, which he gave to his wife. Hari temporarily left her husband and moved in with another officer in the Dutch East Indies. Having studied Indonesian traditions for several months, in 1897 she adopted the artistic name Matahari in communication with her family. Matahari is Malay for Eye of the Day. At her husband's urging, Hari returned to MacLeod and despite having a second child, Louise Jeanne MacLeod, who was born on the 2nd of May 1898, who is pictured with her father. MacLeod's behaviour did not change. Norman John would die at the age of two on the 27th of June 1899 as a result of syphilis caught from his parents. Used to treating grown men, the base doctor overdosed both children, causing them to spew up black vomit and river in agony, which ultimately caused Norman John's death. With army authorities aware that MacLeod's children had syphilis and that he had been having extramarital affairs, he was demoted and posted to a small remote station in the Dutch East Indies. Shortly after the death of Norman John, the disenfranchised couple returned to Amsterdam and officially separated on the 30th of August 1902, however this was not finalised until 1906. Hurry won custody of her sole remaining child, but MacLeod refused to pay child support. During a visit of Louise to her father, MacLeod refused to return her. Without the financial backings to fight it, Hurry accepted this, believing that MacLeod had always been a good dad to her daughter. She moved to Paris as a circus horse rider under the name Lady MacLeod in 1903. Struggling to make a living, Hari became an exotic dancer in 1904 and became one of the most infamous exotic dancers in the early 20th century, including performing several times for the eldest son of Kaiser Wilhelm II until one of the most horrendous and deadly events that the world had ever seen at that time, the First World War. 
During the First World War, Harry was able to travel freely across national borders as the Netherlands remained neutral throughout the war. In the fall of 1915, Harry was visited by Karl Kromer, the honorary German Council of Amsterdam while in The Hague, who offered her 20,000 francs to spy for Germany. While she did accept the money, which she viewed as repayments for furs, jewels and money that the Germans seized when the war broke out, she did not accept the job of spying for Germany. Travelling between France and the Netherlands, she travelled through Spain and the United Kingdom, which inevitably attracted attention from authorities. She lived in the Grand Hotel in Paris, which was largely spared from the worst of the war. She was followed by Georges Ladour, the head of France's external military agency from 1871 until 1940, the Domexe Bureau. Ladour eavesdropped on Harry's phone conversations and kept a log of who she met. However, there was no evidence that she gathered or passed important information to German agents. She then became romantically involved with 23-year-old captain Vadim Maslov, who is pictured with Hagi. Maslov was part of a 500,000 strong Russian expeditionary force, which was fighting on the Western Front in the spring of 1916. In the summer of 1916, Maslov was shot down and badly wounded during a dogfight with the Germans, losing his sight in both of his eyes, and was held at a hospital on the Western Front. Visiting 282 Buslevard Saint-Germain, which housed both the Military Bureau for Foreigners and the Deuxième Bureau, at the advice of her former lover, Jean Hallure, who worked for the War Department and, unbeknownst to Harry, was a spy for Capitaine Georges Ladour, who worked for the Demuxé Bureau, Harry asked if she could travel to the Western Front to see Maslov. The Domixe Bureau became aware that Hagi had performed for Crown Prince Wilhelm, who was a senior German general on the Western Front, and believed that they could use Hagi to their advantage in order to obtain military secrets. In reality, however, Crown Prince Wilhelm was a general in name only, and was merely on the front for propaganda. In the German Empire, he was seen as a playboy and an alcoholic partier. The Domixe Bureau offered 1 million French francs to Hagi if she could seduce Crown Prince Wilhelm and provide French intelligence about German plans. Travelling by steamer from Spain to Falmouth in the United Kingdom, she was arrested in November 1916 and brought to London, where she was interrogated by Sir Basil Thompson, who is pictured to the left. Thompson was the assistant commissioner at the new Scotland Yard. Harry admitted to working for the Domixer Bureau and also admitted that she was employed by Ladour, who told his British authorities to release her and return her to Madrid in Spain. Once in Madrid, Harry managed to enchant German diplomat Major Arnold von Kael, who let slip that there were plans for a landing on the coast of Morocco with German officers, Ottoman Empire soldiers and munitions from the submarine. Harry relayed this information to Ladour, hoping to claim her reward of 1 million French francs. However, no further evidence came forward. She subsequently returned to Paris in December 1916, around the same time when Ladour began using the Eiffel Tower as a listening post to intercept messages from Germany. In December 1916, the Second Bureau of the French War Ministry provided Hagi with the names of six Belgian agents, five of whom were suspected of submitting fake material and one of whom was suspected of being a double agent for Germany and France. Hagi travelled back to Madrid where she met with the German military attaché Major Arnold Kale and asked if she could meet with Crown Prince Wilhelm. Hagi allegedly offered to share French secrets with Germany in exchange for money, however it is unclear whether this was for greed or in an attempt to meet with Crown Prince Wilhelm. Two weeks after she left for Paris, one of the six double agents provided by the French War Ministry to Hagi was executed, while the five Belgian spies continued their operations. This led the Second Bureau to believe, albeit with no substantial evidence, that Hagi had communicated the details of the agent to the Germans. 
In January 1917, Major Kale transmitted radio messages to Berlin describing the helpful activities of a German spy, codenamed H-21, whose biography was so close to Hari that it was obvious who their spy was. With the messages and a code for German intelligence, you could already be broken down by their French counterparts. The Duxemier Bureau intercepted these messages, and through translation, Ladour, who is pictured, easily deduced that H21 was Matahari. Conveniently, Ladour was the only one who saw the messages, and they were subsequently destroyed. Additionally, the chief intelligence officer of the German army, Walter Nikolai, pictured to the left, became increasingly angry with Hagi, as she was unable to provide him with substantive information, instead selling him more Parisian gossip about the sex lives of French politicians and generals. Her employment with the Germans was terminated, and then she was exposed as a German spy by Nikolai to the Duxemier Bureau. In the interim, Ladour had been arrested as being a double spy but was subsequently released. Returning to Paris and having not been paid, a financially stretched Hagi moved to cheaper hotels around Paris. On the 12th of February 1917, a warrant was issued for her arrest, and she was arrested in her room at the Hotel Elysee Palace on the Champs Elysees the next day. Placed in a flea and rat infested cell in the prison in Saint Lazare, she was denied access to medical treatment, her possessions, clean clothing, and lingerie, as well as no soap for washing. Put on trial on the 24th of July, she was accused of spying for Germany and causing the death of at least 50,000 soldiers. Ladoul's telegrams and radio messages were the only evidence against her. Interrogated by Captain Pierre. Bouchardon, she admitted that she had accepted 20,000 francs from a German diplomat in the Netherlands to spy on France, but insisted that she only passed on trivial information as her loyalty was entirely to her adopted nation of France. Secret ink was found in her hotel room at the Hotel Elise Palace, which she contended was merely part of her makeup. Hagi wrote several letters to the Dutch ambassador in France, declaring her innocence. She was heartbroken when the love of her life, Maslov, declined to testify for her and did not care if she was convicted or not. When she found out about this in the courtroom, she fainted. It is widely contended that Hagi was merely a scapegoat for the failures of the French army at the time, with mutinies taking place throughout 1917, as well as the failure of the Nevillier offensive between the 16th of April and the 9th of May 1917 being indecisive and resulting in the death of 187,000 French soldiers. The new Prime Minister of France, Georges, Clemenceau, who came to power on the 16th of November 1917, was prepared to win the war at all costs through total victory, as well as make an example of individuals who were accused of the crimes allegedly committed by Hagi. In reality, at most, Hagi was merely a low-level spy who took money to work for the Germans, but did not actually carry out any spy duties and did not share any secrets beyond the sex lives of politicians and generals with Germans, and her sentence by French authorities was a distraction from the country's disastrous losses on the Western Front, with French women touting her as the greatest woman spy of the century. Regardless, Harry was found guilty of all eight counts against her, and attempts to commute her prison sentence as well as a presidential pardon fell on deaf ears. She was executed on the 15th of October 1917 by a firing squad of 12 soldiers at the age of 41. Refusing to be bound or wear a blindfold, she blew a kiss to the firing squad as they executed her. With no one in her family collecting her body, her head was embalmed in the Museum of Anatomy in Paris and her body was used for medical science. Her head has disappeared, possibly as early as 1954. Her daughter, Louise Jean MacLeod, died on the 10th of August 1919, and it is widely suspected that her death was as a result of the syphilis contracted from her parents. Her ex-husband, Rudolf MacLeod, died on the 9th of January 1928. 
Ladour was eventually cleared of all charges as a double agent and died in Cannes on the 20th of April 1933. Matahari has inspired five films, five stage musicals, and a 12-episode Russian-Portuguese TV series named Matahari. In the 1967 James Bond film Casino Royale, not the one with Daniel Craig, but the one with Peter Sellers and Joanna Petlett, who is playing Mata Bond, Petlett is said to be the daughter of James Bond and Matahari. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that like and subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. You'll also be seeing two other videos for you to check out. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.